Hi Floss Tube. It is Lily at 42 stitches. It's been a while. <laughs> um, I remember in the beginning of the year thinking, you know what, I should do these videos maybe every two weeks or so because things start accumulating and then I get overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I want to share on the videos. Um, that's what happened, but um, life also happens and um, I just didn't have time to to do another video so um, the more time passed the more overwhelmed I got because I've been kind of a stitching fool uh, for the past couple months but um, today I was like you know what the girl's sleeping let's just get it done now we've got um, we've got a snow day here uh, actually let me see if I can turn this around and you guys can have a look at our snow I don't know if you guys have a look at that I'm not gonna get up I'm too lazy and <laughs> my phone just warned me that it's gonna lose power so we're gonna do this really quick um, okay so first things first uh, my lovely husband has decided to share with certain members of our family oh see you're on my kids toy boxes there let's bring it a little more forward um, so at Amalia's birthday party um, which was about a month ago at this point. Yeah, about a month ago. He decided to share with his sister and uh, her husband that I have a floss tube video. And they, of course, well not both of them, but her husband immediately subscribed to me. Um, so, hi Pietro if you're watching. Um, I would just like to remind you that I am Facebook friends with your mother, two aunts, uncle, and sister, and they will I'm sure be happy to provide me with embarrassing stuff of you if you decide to tease me for this. So keep that in mind. Um, Easter will be interesting. <laughs> uh, okay, so that little bit. So you, you guys can all say hi to Pietro and Stephanie if they're watching. Um, so yeah, it's just been busy. I'm not even going to recap it all. Um, lots of stuff going on. So I'm just going to get right into the stitching so I can feel like I've finally shared it and that I could just be, you know, kind of clean slate and try again doing it every two weeks so I don't feel completely overwhelmed with doing these videos. Um, although my stitching has kind of slowed down a little bit lately. Uh, I went through like, you know, kind of a lot of stitching, a lot of new starts, a lot of finishes um, in January and February, and then it's kind of slowed down a little bit now. I'm still stitching, but it's just not as much. So, is that it? Yeah, okay. So let's start with my whips. I think what I was working on the last time I had a video, I was in the middle of my Remembrance Fields by Maria Diaz. And I stitched maybe a couple more days after that video. So I'll just show you where I am now. I don't remember where I left off on anything. So you guys are just gonna get a quick update and I think I've done quite a bit I mean I've definitely done quite a bit since the time before that when I picked it up so the last time I picked it up which is when I was doing the last video um, I did a lot of progress and it's looking pretty good and oh just to remind you what the piece will look like you got everything in there yeah so you know it's pretty good uh, it's one over one on 28 count white Monaco and you know once you get going on the one over one I kind of get in a flow and I really like it but it, it does kind of like take me a minute to like get used to that tiny stitching it's totally worth it it's gonna be gorgeous but um, it's not necessarily my favorite to do but it's um, the, the results are probably my favorite of all the stitching I've done um, so we're pushing through that. I'm looking forward to that. I've got some fun ideas of how I want to finish it, but I won't really go into that until I get closer to having it maybe actually finished. Uh, so the next one I'm working on it has some one over one as well, and it's what I'm currently working on this past week. And I'll work on it a couple more days. Oops, just pulled my needle out. And it is Siren in the Shipwreck. Ugh, I have to undo it. I'm not going to take it out of the hoop, but I will undo because I keep it all rolled like this to eat the fabric out of my way. So to remind you, Mirabilia, Siren in the Shipwreck, oops, there you go. <clears throat> I 
And here's where we are. Sorry, I am not taking it out of the hoop. And I am doing the one over one skin. Get close there. My little head poking in the corner of the screen because I'm trying to see if you're looking at what I'm looking at here. She is gorgeous. These colors are just fantastic. The colors of the thread and um, the fabric that I chose, um, which is a, a 30, 32 count linen uh, from Picture This Plus Arctic. That's what it's called. And they're just lovely, lovely, lovely colors. It's a little more blue than it's turning up in the video, but it does have that gray. And I like that it has that grayness to it because it makes the colors in the actual stitching pop a lot more, but it's not so dull where you feel like it shouldn't go with such beautiful colors, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna put my needle back. And I'll roll that up later when I pick it up again. It's fine. Where's my clip? Handy dandy clip. I got some bobbins here too. Put that all together. So that was Siren and the Shipwreck. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, and then Johnny. You guys know Johnny. Johnny Stitcher, who's just the sweetest person in the entire world. Um, she saw my Bob Ross Chia Pet. <laughs> And I made some other comments about Bob Ross and I mean Bob Ross was great, right? He's just the chill and um, You know sees the beauty and everything and 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 allows you or helps yourself helps you to embrace the creative part of yourself and um, And she surprised me with a gift a while ago at this point I don't remember when it was and I as soon as I got it. I almost immediately started it up and it's, it started, it's finished, and I just FFO'd it last night too. And that is Bob Ross. And oh, who is this by? It's um something Maui, Maui something. Hmm. Sorry. If you really want to know, I'll let you know. Make a comment and I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah, we don't make mistakes. Just happy little accidents. Isn't that a good attitude to have? Bob Ross. Yeah, and so I just, uh, I got some foam core and I didn't even lace them. I was gonna lace them, but I just glued them. Uh, and I got this little easel because it has to be an easel, right? And he sits upstairs on our bookshelf like that. I might go looking around at the craft store for a squirrel that I can just like hot glue on the corner over here because he had pet squirrels, which I mean, it's it's a pet squirrel. If I can find a squirrel, I'm gonna put a squirrel on this somewhere, right? <laughs> so, thank you so much, Johnny. You are a wonderful person, absolutely. Um, and then another start and finish since my last video was a freebie by, um, trying to blank on everything, Hands On Designs. The um, freebie that they did, I think it was actually a, a freebie from last year. Um, you've probably seen a lot of other folks doing it, and it's this guy right here, Love, and this is an FFO'd. So, finished, started, FFO'd it since our last video, and it's just on some uh, red 14 count Ada. Oh, Bob was on um, some 28 count Monaco that I coffee dyed, and this is 14 count Ada in red, and it's uh, white. Actually, I think it's B50, yeah, B5200. Um, DMC. Sorry, I just heard something in the monitor making sure she's still sleeping. <laughs> um, and then the fabric I used in the back, got that up, got that at uh, just Joanne's, stopped in and I saw that, thought it was perfect. And the ribbon I got there too. So beautiful, sits on the mantle, it's just a um, piece of foam. And uh, did I glue? I glued, yeah, tacky glued this one. Love it. So I did another one as well, and it's up uh, in my sewing machine, uh, pinned together. So I wasn't about to take that all apart to show it off in this video. Um, I haven't FFO'd it yet, but when I do, I'll show it to you guys. But I do have a picture of that one, so I'll show you that. Hopefully the glare from the... And it's a very light pink, also 14 count uh, Ada, and 
various DMC threads uh, in pinks and grays. I don't remember what they are at this point. I, I didn't even write them down, so I can't even notate them in my little stitch book. But there it is. Love it. That one's going to be turned into like a long pillow with a little bit of lace trim. Um, so when I get that one finished, when I get that one finished, um, I will share it. So we got that. What else? Europe. Travel through Europe. The free DMC sell from DMC Portugal or Spain website does it too. Um, Mm -mm -mm. Got some time in on that. I really do want to get this finished sooner rather than later. It's a whip I'm carrying over from last year. I had wanted to finish last year, but got distracted with too many things. And so for the longest time I had just the three. I'm going to just go over them again. Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Moscow, London, Brussels, Berlin, and now I just did Paris. And I am doing the words in Portuguese if you are looking at it. Like, I don't think that's how you spell things. Well, Paris is the same, obviously, but. And um, Bern, Berna, I got started. So this month I want to finish up Berna and I would like to finish Vienna before the month is out, but Vienna has a whole lot of windows in it and that just gets kind of tedious. So we'll see, we'll see how I want to do that. I'm really rushing through this video, aren't I? I'm afraid the phone's gonna die is the problem. <laughs> Finally get a chance to like, just sit down and do this video and I forgot to charge my phone, of course. Okay, so that's that. Now we get to my favorite. Um, I started this one just on, um, on a whim. I've been eyeballing it for a while in my stash. Uh, I had gotten it like last year and I kept thinking, well, We'll do it soon, I'll do it soon, eventually I'll get to it. And then one day in January or February, whenever it was, I was like, today is the day. So I went home, I started doing the fabric and thread selection, which is always a lot of fun. And I came up with what I think is a fantastic combo. So it's ink circles, Fordly. Isn't that a pretty little stitch? And it's not very big. It's actually, it's really pretty and, um, pretty quick to stitch. It's not overly complicated. It's, it's nice. I can see myself stitching this a couple more times too with some different colors. Not any time in the near future, I think, but it's definitely one that I'm going to kind of always have in my stash and eyeball it now and again thinking, you know what, I've got some beautiful threads that I think would go great with that. So I ended up choosing from my stash, um, both fabric and thread from X Jew Designs because she is awesome. I mean, who, who out there is not completely in love with her fabric and threads. It's just gorgeous. So I ended up choosing this fabric, which was 30, 36 count Frosty Aqua, and it's all wrinkly for me stitching on it, but I'm just let you try and get a good look at the color there. It's like a blue, gray, green, more in the green family, even though it's coming out probably more blue, gray but it's more green than it looks there. I think it's getting a little washed out. It helps if you put something white up against it, doesn't it? Maybe that's a little more true. Stunning, anyway. And then I used, um, this is dark soil, right? Dark soil cotton floss from her, which has this lovely variegation of like, it goes from like chocolatey browns to like a dark hazelnut to this gray brown kind of color. It's really, really, really pretty. And I'm so glad I still have some left over. Um, if I had done this on the suggested um, 30 count is what they suggest and doing two threads, over two threads on 30 count with two, ply, uh, two plies of floss, I wouldn't have had enough um, of the floss that is, but um, I found this fabric and I thought the combination of these two, whoops, isn't that pretty? There you go. It's enough teasing. I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> of course, you, you, some of you may have already seen this, but, and again, it's wrinkly, but let's get you a nice view of it. And there is the completed piece. 
It is so pretty. It kills me. I'm. Ugh, it's gorgeous. I did this um, one strand of floss over two on the 36 count. The variegation is so pretty and the fabric, my goodness. I'm, I'm seriously like completely in love with this. It reminds me of um, um, Ingeborg and her love affair with the fish. If you guys know what I'm talking about, Ingeborg had a stitch too far and that fish that she stitched up um, a few months ago at this point and how in love she was with it. That's how I feel about this. It is so pretty. Um, so I'm on the search now for the perfect frame for it and I've uh, gone around to a few shops. I haven't checked out the um, thrift stores yet or the Goodwill or anything like that. So hopefully soon I can do that. If I don't find anything there, I'm not gonna wait until something shows up. I'm just gonna go online and find something because I need to frame this up right quick. I love it. Um, I definitely want like some sort of a chocolatey, espresso-y kind of a wood colored frame to go with this that has some um, detailing in the frame, not just a simple uh, smooth frame, but I don't want it to be so ornate that it takes away from the stitching. So we'll, we'll look around and see what we can find. I don't know if I'm gonna do glass over it or not. I mean, you know, that's always the, it's always the struggle because under glass it of course stays more protected but I'm so in love with these stitches and the thread and the fabric that I almost want to do it without glass in the frame so you can really appreciate it. I kind of feel the same way also about the, um, the Remembrance Fields, the poppy one that I'm doing. Whenever I end up framing that, I might not do glass on that one either. And I think I'm gonna put them in places in the house where it's not like they're gonna get a lot of environmental dirt on them. You know, it's not gonna be like in the kitchen or in a bathroom. They're probably gonna be up in the hallway somewhere or the dining room. I don't know. That's so pretty. Seriously in love with this. Highly recommend this pattern if you if you like it. If you're thinking of, of getting it, just do it. It's beautiful. And I'm sure you can find other gorgeous fabrics and threads that you have or that XG Design is selling um, to finish it up because it's just, I'm so in love with this. And her surface is fantastic. For, for like coming from Hungary all the way to Connecticut, it was like, I forget how long it was, but it was like, what, a week or something like that for some of my more recent orders to come. I mean, obviously if she's having like a big sale um, or if it's like a busy time of year or something, it might take longer. But even when I ordered from her on Black Friday, I think it was like maybe two weeks, maybe. Um, she is wonderful. Go check her out if you don't. I'm gonna try to remember to link it. I never link anything below because I always forget and I'm just trying to get the video uploaded. But if I remember, I'm gonna link her down below her Etsy shop um, and check her out. Love her. So what's next? Stocking. So I didn't get as much done on the stocking as I had wanted to. And I was hoping to get a lot done just because it's been a pretty easy stitch so far because um, I'm working on just the white snow part of it and, and the bottom of it has so much white snow. And those are just half stitches. So it's been going pretty quickly. I'll remind you what it is. It's a Dimensions Kit uh, Snow Bear Stocking. And this is for Amalia because I did Toby's last year. If you guys saw that one already. Um, and it comes with uh, an Ada that I did not use. Uh, I substituted it for Picture This Plus Crystal Dwarf in 28 count. Um, and I'm not doing, this is supposed to be all stitched in white up here. That ain't happening. I'm just gonna get probably like some 28 count Monaco and you know stitch her name on it and tack it on with some uh, cording to cover the seam. But we're not there yet. So yeah, I mean a lot of this is, a lot of this is already done, this white stuff and um, the white stuff. Um, the snow and some of this graying shading I did um, and I'm just getting started on one of these trees so I had wanted to get a little bit more of the beginning of these trees done I, obviously I wanted to get through all that which I did um, and get a little bit more of the trees but I didn't get as much as I had wanted to this round and that's why I'll get get to it when I get to it um, and fill in some more shading and then the bears and that snowball are actually full crosses so everything else though, all those trees, everything up in there, all this is only half stitched. So it's been going really quickly because of that. Um, and a lot of those little snowflakes coming down, I'm gonna look into possibly replacing that instead of cross stitch do beads. So I think that'll be 
uh, a nice look, but we'll get to that. So for now, I just want to get those trees done. Um, I think by the end of March, I'm going to be able to pick it up again because there's a few other things I want to want to do. And hopefully I'll get more progress that time around. I just kept starting new things. I think that's what the problem was. And when I was stitching this is when I was starting like the Bob Ross and the two loves or one of the loves. And then the other one I did a little bit later on, um, the four de, uh, four de Lee and just I kept starting things. So that's still pretty good progress. And for all that white stitching, like that's not bad <laughs> for muscling through all of that. So you see, I just kind of got the tree started over here. Next time, hopefully I'll get a whole lot more. It's a hawk circling my backyard. <laughs> Just caught my eye. We have a couple of hawks, well, several hawks obviously, but a couple of hawks that perch over there pretty frequently, which I don't mind because they keep the mice away, right? Um, just rabbit trail, right guys? Rabbit trail. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with, with the progress, but I did, I did hope to get more done by this point. I still think I'm gonna get this done before summer is out. I just need to, the next time I pick it up, really like focus on just the whole week on just doing that instead of like getting distracted with other things in my stash, stash that I've been wanting to start. Okay, so that's that. And then one more new start. Uh, and I started this on Valentine's Day because it's a anniversary piece for my husband and I. We have our five-year wedding anniversary coming up this October. So I figured it'd be nice to stitch a little commemorative piece. Now we've been together a lot more than five years. Maybe 13 at this point. I'd have to sit and do the math, but uh, you know, it's five years married. So my token of love, Rosewood Manor. Let me get a little closer. And I'm doing it on an ivory linen silk 28 count. It's really stiff, um, but it looks nice. I do like it, but it's oh, really stiff for some reason. Um, you would think linen silk would have better body to it, but. Um, and I've changed the colors from this red to a rich jewel toned purple because that was our wedding colors with a little bit of gold in there as well. And I'm really loving how it's looking. So let's pull it out. Now, on top of being uh, really stiff, it's also um, not really transparent, but hold on, I got a couple of different threads here. But it, it is a little um, see-through-y. Get a little organized, organized. Goodness, I did not leave this very organized, did I? So this is the DMC I'm using, which is 550. Really pretty, pretty jewel toned purple. We got married in October, so this is kind of like, actually you can use this purple many times in the year, but it feels like an october -y purple to me. I know you think like October, you think like the oranges and all that, but that feels october -y purple to me. So that's what we're using. I love purple. I like this kind of like rich jewel tone colors in general. And then for the gold part, I'm using 676 DMC mixed with some blending filament, which is a pain in the butt to work with. But I had some left over from Toby's stocking. Uh, so I figured I'd use it for this, but I think I'm gonna run out um, before I get done with this, even though I'm not using it in a ton of places, I'm making it mostly purple. It's, I'm using it enough where I don't know if this is going to last me. I'm um, doing one strand of the DMC with two strands of the blending filament. So I might have to get me some more of that. More threads. Threads everywhere. Goodness. So here is where we are. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? So the fabric is ivory, it is ivory, right? Or what is it? No, it's antique white, antique white, 28 count linen silk. And I don't have a manufacturer on here, so I don't know. I picked this up at my, um, my LNS, my not so local LNS. <laughs> so you can see I'm trying to keep it majority purple and just a few tones of gold here and there in each one of the motifs, or some of the motifs I've done completely in gold and some of them I'll probably do completely in, in purple, like that one. 
So in here is gonna be our names, uh, or initials rather, and then our wedding date, and then there's another spot later on to put the date that I've done this, so then you can see it's five years. Um, but if I do it in that gold, I don't think it's gonna be very legible. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet. I think I might try and use this NPI silk that I have sitting around. It's um, Palomino Gold Range color 695. Maybe, maybe. Um, I might look into doing a shade of purple that's in the same family, but maybe a little lighter maybe so i'm just going to stitch more of the motifs and then at the end probably decide what i want to do so that'll stay blank i do love that little gold bow though isn't that cute just little things little things keep me entertained really happy with this piece the color's coming through i think so you never know until i re rewatch this i know when i've been um posting my updates on Instagram, I'm always dismayed that the colors never seem to come out true to true to life with a number of my pieces. I just don't have that good of a camera phone, I guess. Or my, You know what it mostly probably is? It's because usually I take a photo after I'm done stitching for the day, and that's at night next to, you know, a 100 watt light, light bulb on my lamp and you know, that's not ideal for taking true to uh, true to life color pictures. I'm, I'm clo much closer to the door and window than I am usually when I'm videotaping. Usually I'm a little bit farther back there so you don't see the, the kids mess. Um, but there's mess everywhere today, so who cares? Um, so I figured I'd be a little bit closer to natural light to see if it helps. Let me know if you think it's all right or not. Oh, and then the last piece I worked on, and I don't have it because it was a gift for somebody and I've already mailed it. Hopefully they're getting it today. If not today, tomorrow. Should be getting it soon. I mailed it last week on a Thursday, I think. Thursday or Friday, I think it was Thursday. And they said it should take about a week because it's all the way over to um, Alberta, Canada. And it was Brooks Books free grumpy cat ornament and hopefully you got okay of a view of that and that was on a 14 count uh, blue I don't remember what blue it had a it had a name it wasn't just pink like the other one it was something some kind of a blue a blue and I backed the ornament with um, the same fabric I actually used for the kids' stockings, which is that um, kind of a red velvety with uh, silver polka dots. Um, I, my sewing skills need some major help, guys. Uh, <laughs> I used to be pretty decent at it. Um, my mom was a seamstress, and uh, not professionally, but she's taken a lot of classes when she was younger, and um, all my life she had sewn a lot of my clothes, a lot of things around the house. Uh, as you guys already know, crocheting and knitting is sort of her forte, crocheting specifically, but she's done a lot of really great um, sewing and she taught me when I was younger. But I just haven't done it a lot lately and uh, my machine was acting up. Maybe it was user error, um, but that's it. That's all I got anyway. So my future plans, uh, Siren, I'm working that this week. Next week, I'm gonna start the uh, spring uh, spring pattern for the Country Cottage Needleworks. Oops. Uh, yep, ten percent, ten percent battery. Okay, we're we're getting there. Uh, so I'm gonna start the spring Country Cottage Needleworks um, seasonal celebrations. So I'm gonna do that one. Um, maybe FFO it by spring, which is a week and a half from now, or two weeks, I guess, from now. If not, I'll at least FO it before spring officially starts. That's my goal and uh, go back to the Europe piece, try to do Vienna and the rest of Bern, and then I have to do something for the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat. Um, I don't know what yet. They're having like a, a Smalls um, trade, trade? I'm sure there's a better word. I'm not thinking of it now because I'm trying to rush myself. So I gotta do that, and then go back to the stocking before the end of the month. Um, and then I'm sure things will pop up here and there, but hopefully I'll get a video in sooner so I don't feel this rushed and overwhelmed. Look at that, half an hour. 
Is that it? Floss Tube Fit Club. I've totally fallen off the back. It's just been a little crazy, but I'm, I really need to focus on getting back to good health and not just eating my kids' scraps um, <laughs> for lunch. And then because I'm so malnourished, I end up breaking down and going, cheesecake, and then just eat like an entire cheesecake to make up for the lack of nutrition. It's just not really healthy either. Um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, so quickly, hopefully before my phone dies, for Christmas, my husband had gotten me um, one of those Ancestry.com DNA tests. Um, Pietro, if you're watching, I know you're rolling your eyes right now. <laughs> um, so we got one of those. I did it, yeah, she's still sleeping. Um, I did it like mid-January, mailed it in. They're only getting to processing it like this past week and it's still two to four weeks before they have results on that so i'm hoping to get results before easter um and if the family is going to be together we'll do the big reveal then and uh i might videotape myself opening it too whenever i get the result and then i'll post it after i let my family know because i'll probably get it before i'll videotape it then go to easter reveal to my family and then i'll post something um on that as well so it'll be interesting I'm excited. I'm excited to see what it's going to be. I mean, like my family, at least as far back as my great grandparents, I know are from that, from Trajos, Portugal. Oh, my accent just went back and forth between English and Portuguese there. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and it's very close to the Spanish border. So there could be like some Spanish there. We're like 12 kilometers from the Spanish border. And um, like my great grandfather on my dad's side was an orphan. So we don't really know exactly his family from that point. Um, but it's all going to be like Iberian Peninsula, pretty sure. And the majority is going to be that, I'm guessing. However, in the Iberian Peninsula, there was a lot of invasions. You had the Moors coming in from the south. You had the Celts coming in from the north. You had the Roman Empire coming in from the east. Um, and then, you know, it was a big trade uh, country. And, and during the Age of Discoveries and all that business, so there's a lot of other influences that could be in there. And you just don't really know. Um, so it'll be, it'll be fun to watch that. And, and I've read up on like the statistics of how they do it and all that. And so it's not like things are going to be kind of unexpected, but you got to kind of, if you're, if you're, if you're science mind, minded and mathematically statistically minded, you, you kind of, I think have a better understanding of what the results really are telling you. Um, it's just interesting. I've been reading um, some things on the, on forums and people are getting all upset. Like, I know I'm a quarter Italian. And it's like, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's even though the results didn't come up is that if you read into how it, I'm not, not going to get into it now, but if you read into it, there's a reason why you might not come out a quarter Italian when they do that. So um, besides the fact that people are migrating, it's it's more than just that. Um, it's just how they, they read the genetics and they come up with their estimates, which is what it is. Um, so yeah, so if you're interested in that, look forward to that after Easter. Um, I'll post something about that, hopefully. Yeah, that's it. I hope everyone is well. Um, uh, I will, I'm so behind on watching everyone else's videos. I'm not even trying to catch up because I just don't unfortunately have the time for that. Um, but I do watch wherever I can. I just kind of pick one at random. It sort of depends if I need a quick video. I just look for the smallest video. If I can do a longer one or I don't mind like watching it in pieces, then I'll pick one of the longer ones that are you know recently posted. Um, comment when I can, but it's not been very frequently. Um, and, and yeah, life. But I'm out there, I'm watching. I love watching you guys. I like seeing everyone stitching in all of the social media. And uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying mine too. So I will try and do a video more frequently so I am not this rushed and overwhelmed. And, um, and that's it. Okay, bye everyone.